All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of what you need to know for OSCP. In this one, I'm going to be covering a new tool that I've been using. It's not too new, really, but when I first started, this wasn't around, and it is a vast improvement, in my opinion, over what I used to use. So this one is going to be featuring LinPs. Now, if you're dealing with a Windows box, there's also a Windows version of this called WinPs, and... Uh, the context you're going to use it in is if you have a shell on the system already, but you're only a user level account. And uh, for you more beginner guys out there, when I say you have a shell on the system, what I mean is you're able to run commands on the underlying operating system. Now, through whatever what means that might be, you know, maybe you're exploiting a vulnerable web server and through P the PHP language or whatever technology is running on the server, you're able to run commands on the underlying operating system. Maybe it's through a nice and pretty SSH shell. It's always nice when you get SSH, um, the secure shell, right? You know, maybe it is, it was through a web, uh, you know, exploiting a website. And from there you spawned a, a connected back to your netcat listener and you have nice, uh, easy command execution here. Whatever the case may be, you are able to run commands on the underlying operating system. However, you're only a user level account and you want to do you know, what we call privilege escalation to go from the user level to the root user, which is the highest level of privilege out of any account. So that is ultimately where we want to go. Now, if we're training for something like OSCP, uh, there's going to be a text file that only the root user can read, and that's going to give us the points. So to get the full amount of points, we need to get to the root account, at least for that purpose, right? So privilege escalation is like a whole big thing in and of itself, but one of the biggest uh, assist, uh, you know, one of the biggest, um, the best tools that you can use are ones that... Uh, go out and look at the all the files and the the configuration if you will on the linux server as well as all the kernel stuff just tons and tons of information and it processes it and it you can see at a glance if anything looks out of the ordinary something that you could possibly exploit to you know escalate your privileges now in the past i would use a tool called linenum it's been around forever the linenum.sh script and that's just, that's still a pretty good choice. Uh, definitely, um, I wouldn't write it off just yet. But now that this uh, new tool came out, LinPs, I just think it is so much better because it highlights it. And I'll show you in a minute. It's gonna, it highlights all the key findings. So you can like tell at a glance, you know, it will jump out at you what is out of the ordinary. Because especially if you're new to this stuff, you know, you might not know what to look for when you're looking at this long output. So, you know what, I'll upload both of them and we can compare and contrast the difference. And I can just show you why I like this one so much. So, I actually don't really know what the privilege escalation vulnerability is on this one. Maybe it, I don't even know if it's uh, something that we can easily uh, identify and exploit in this one, but that's not really the goal. I just want to demo this for you. So, in this case, I have an SSH connection. You know, I have a shell on the remote system. Now, if I go over to my box here, I can go to where I have the binary saved or the, not really binaries, but the, this, this shell scripts. Uh, in this case for me, I have it in op privesc. First things first, I'm going to show you guys the linenum.sh. This was the one that I used to use originally. Okay. I'm going to fire up a Python web server here on port 80. And I'll just use wget to pull it down. So let's see, my IP address in this case is going to be this one here. So we go down here and we'll say linenum.sh and we'll go ahead and make it executable. And yeah, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is, uh, this is what I used to use. I'll just go ahead and full screen this a little easier to see because there's a lot of output. So as you see, it's doing tons and tons of checks. And if you're completely new, and even if you're not new, to be quite honest with you, it's still a lot of stuff to look through and it's very easy to miss key information, right? Because chances are you're going to kind of glance through this, right? 
And if you're not glancing through it, then it's going to take a pretty long time, right, to go through the whole thing. You look through this and uh, try to notice anything out of the ordinary, right? Um, especially on the tougher boxes. This can get pretty difficult. It's very easy to miss stuff. You get my point, basically, right? Tons of information can easily miss stuff. Let's compare that to the tool that I now like to use over this one, which is LinPs. So if I go back here and kill this server, I'm going to go into Privilege Escalation Awesome Script Suite. And see, there's a LinPs and a WinPs. We're going to use LinPs because we're dealing with Linux here. And uh, same thing, we'll fire up the web server in this directory now. And we'll go ahead and pull it down with wget once again. Actually, let me just up arrow this. Oops. Linps.sh. And of course, once again, we'll make it executable. And now I'll go ahead and execute it. What's really nice about this is it's color coordinated. And you see the legend there, right? If there is, uh, and while this is running, let me just go up so I can show you. This is what's so great about it. Everything's color coordinated for you. And the colors actually mean stuff. So here's the legend here. If you see anything highlighted in yellow, there's a 99% chance that that is the privilege escalation vector that you need to uh, root the box or at least to elevate your privilege in some way. Uh, if it's in red, then they really recommend that you take a look at it, right? And then light cyan is users with a console, meaning, you know, maybe they have like bin bash or, you know, bin sh, something like that. And uh, blue is users without a console and mounted devs. And green is like common things. And so what this allows you to do is because this is highlighted like this and red really pops out, you can pretty much do this at a glance. Like you can glaze over, oh, stop here. This is the sudo version. Maybe there's something I can do with that. You know, they recommend me take a look at it because it's in red. And I can just really like take a glance at this and there's a way lower chance that I'm going to miss anything that's super important because of how it's all co uh, color coordinated like this. Uh, and this is so great. I didn't realize this was, uh, when this first came out, I didn't realize what the buzz was around it, honestly. But I definitely do now. And uh, yeah, this is still running. Of course, there's so much more stuff you can do with it. If you're dealing with OSCP, you can actually use this on a site that is dual nicked and you can do a port scan through your victim box that way. So it's a cool way to do some pivot stuff as well. Haven't done that personally, but I know you can do that. But yeah, I've definitely worked on boxes before with this script where I just glanced down, saw something highlighted in yellow, and sure enough, that was the vector <laughs> to get privilege escalation. So I've had a lot of boxes where I literally did the privesc in about five minutes or less because of this uh, because of this post-exploitation script here. Uh, and so that's basically the idea. And uh, let's see. Still running here. Let's see if there was anything of interest. I really... It's been a long time since I've done this box. I don't know how simple or difficult this one was on the privesque, really. But uh, if it is anything obvious enough, then it will jump out to us. And if not, of course, that's when we start looking into more of the, the red text. And, and it gives you a great way to really run your methodology, right? The best way to run your methodology is the easiest things with the highest ROI first, and then you go down into the more and more time-consuming things, right? So that have a lower chance of success, right? So we'd start by looking through, are there any yellows? Okay. We don't see anything highlighted in yellow. We go through again. Okay, what what about the stuff in red? And we start looking into all that. And then, okay, what about the stuff in cyan, right? What about the stuff in green? So it's pretty much uh, a solid methodology that we can apply, and it makes it really easy because it's color-coordinated. And same thing with the, the Windows version of this, too. Uh, it's also color-coordinated. Here we go. We see there's actually a database that is uh, accessible through the loopback here, maybe... We can find some database creds and uh, log into the database and see if we can get some further credentials from there, things like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that would give us, this one wasn't an ultra easy box, 
but uh, it still gives us a lot of leads that we can go off of, especially if we go th back through this, looking at all the red text and things like that. So hopefully this was of help to you guys. I definitely wish I would have known about it. I wish this tool was out when I first started, uh, to be honest. It would have saved me a lot of time on uh, privilege escalation. And the more you use a tool, like pick a tool. If it's Lindenum, it's Lindenum, you know. If it's this one, great. If it's another one, great. But just pick a tool and use it consistently. And that way you know what the regular behavior looks like. So if there is anything that's out of the ordinary, it's going to stand out to you extra, uh, extra strongly. So that would be my advice to you. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button to help get this message out there. I'll see you guys right over in those videos on screen now if you want to get started on what you need to know for OSCP. Go out there and apply working on your privesk. And yeah, let me know how it goes down in the comment section below. I'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching.